I really think that with women helping women around the world, um, I had the pleasure to work with a lot of different women in different countries that they started NGOs on their own. And I think that a project like Alabatus is really important so that the younger women could see, or even any, any woman in any age, to be inspired, to think there's hope. Um, their chances, uh, opportunities, um, just examples that they can pull from different persons. And just my own journey to be able to observe and watch they grow. Um, usually it's one woman in one country, but they develop things that they could give it back to their own people. Uh, and I think that's the way the global citizenship is going to be all about. I'm Eva. Uh, I'm Chinese, born and raised in Hong Kong and I'm right now working in a pediatric clinic. I'm a youngest of four children, and um, two sisters, a brother, and then me. And they are all living in Los Angeles, uh, except, of course, me living in China. Being the youngest of four, my, and just to be very frank, my father had always wanted to have boys, so the two sisters I had, and it was like, they really wanted to have a boy. And then finally, they had a boy, so that was good, and then, um, in some way, I was told I was an, I was an accident. Uh, so m m my age difference with my brother is only 15 months apart. So I, we we were really close in age, but um, my brother was never really good with um, academics. So I got to be um, a year uh, ahead of him when we graduated. So um, and my parents are really valued to have a son. I was looking at education, uh, thinking that if I could just go overseas, get an education, uh, graduate from a university, then I would have a different kind of life. And my parents were not wealthy at all, and um, so all the money was, ex was expected to go to my, my brother. Um, but unfortunately, his education uh, results in Hong Kong was not that great, so he couldn't uh, get a visa. So he tried many times, he tried multiple times, and um, so he, he couldn't leave. So in my mind, I was like, oh, okay, then it's my chance. It's, it's automatically, in, in my mind, I thought, oh, I could just go. Uh, but actually, my parents really didn't want to support me on that. Uh, actually, they, they told me, oh, you know, why don't you just go be a teacher, or why don't you just go work in a bank? But I just thought, oh, you know, I, I got the... I got the better uh, education. I really wanted to, to do something more for myself. And then reluctantly, because I got a, uh, a, a US visa uh, f as a student visa going to America, so they really reluctantly allowed me to go. To be honest, the first time I walked on the um, Broadway Boulevard in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, I remember a pretty tall white Anglo man walking towards me and said, go home chain. Uh, and I still remember that after, this would be like 30 some years ago. And, and I think still there's a level of people um, thinking where women should be, or, or in some ways like I've gone into a field that is actually quite typical for women, is uh, social service. Uh, so it's a majority of, uh, uh, of us are working as women, uh, and we really do see that men coming into the field, they get promoted faster or sooner. Most of the men come through the education to become an occupational therapist, then they get a, like a master level or higher level, and they become like administrators or managers quite quickly. Um, China definitely has changed so much, um, like from the range of women about my age group that they get education. You know, the one-child policy, definitely, from what I read and from what I observed, really helped promote it, some of the status of the woman, because if the parents didn't have any other resource and there's only one child. So uh, uh, quite a bit of women are educated, they are in management position, or they are, you know, doctors, um, professors. But also, on the other hand, um, the jobs are still really related to sort of middle management position, I don't see that higher up. Like, even in my company, I would say 
the CEOs are still men. I really see myself at this junction of my life that be, to be a good mentor or to be a good example. When I do the volunteer work, it's amazing for the different women I encounter in different countries. You know, they're just really energized. They're really wanting to help their own people. I always say, one parent, you are the you're the parent of one or you're the expert of your own child. And I myself, I don't have any children, but I just happen to have known a lot of children. And by having that experience, I know in general what would be in 10, 20 years for some of the cases. So I really like using those experiences that I had to help these younger ones. Most Chinese would believe that you always have a child. You, it's, it's a mixed feeling for some people when they say, when they talk to me like, oh, you don't have any children. It's like they feel very sad for me. And I, for me, when I was uh, younger, I was in a relationship, uh, but I just knew that I couldn't have it all. Yeah, usually in China, it's interesting, these last couple of years in the taxi, a lot of taxi drivers will try to you know, s s come up with some small talk and they, instead of asking, like, are you married right away, they will say, do you have any children? And then I say, you know, male. It's like, they got really quiet. <laughs> and I say, like, well, it's okay. You know, they're just like, oh, <laughs> it's a different kind of thinking. And now with the government that would allow the parents to have a second child anyways, uh, I would expect, you know, 10 to 20 years time, there will be a change. Uh, I remember last year, when that policy was just announced, one of the women I knew, she ran a, a firm, and she said that about two-thirds of her employed women in their late 30s are going to get pregnant because they really want to have a second child. So she said that my workforce is going to change this next year when they are going on maternity leave. Uh, so it's a different kind of socio-economical changes, even with the general population. I found some of my co-workers in my clinic, uh, they are really under a lot of pressure to get married. Uh, even though after all this time, you think that professional working women, you know, we have a lot of skills, we economically, we're pretty independent, but it was amazing for me when I was talking to them, and they may be in their late 20s, early 30s, and they have so much pressure from their parents. Like one of them said that her mother called her every day. Have you met a boyfriend yet? Are you, are you trying? The normal trend is you would go to university, you meet somebody, you get married, you buy an apartment, you get a car, and then you have a child. It, it's still pretty, routine in that expectation. It, it really uh, didn't give you a lot of, of uh, thinking or, or each person's different. You know, some of us might get married early but not have children or some of us may not get married uh, and decided to develop a career or travel. You know, the whole range of, of honoring everybody being a little bit different. The pressure is so high to be married. And I found some of my friends um, they may not be really satisfied with their spouse or uh, they are still looking for something else. Uh, one of my other co-workers was saying that her own mother was telling her that, uh, and she's married, and her own mother said that, you know, you couldn't be selfish, you know, you, you need to have a child soon because your in-laws are getting old. And even after all these years, uh, still the focus of having a grandson is so important. Uh, uh, it's still valued as a better a better one to, to have a grandson than having a granddaughter. Uh, I don't have just one role model and I think I always observe other women in, in the present time um, that they gave me clues or gave me inspiration or uh, suggestion. Uh, I just sort of evolved into who I am right now. I, and so I sort of make my decision as, the, as I go on and, and during the time. Um, and then when I was fairly settled in my career and it really felt secure financially. Um, I really wanted to do some volunteer work um, and just giving something back to the world. And I felt as a Chinese woman, I really felt I could be a good ambassador to, re to represent the small percentage of, 
a, a person like me as an example, a woman. Uh, I speak English with an accent. I speak Cantonese with an accent, and I speak Mandarin with an accent. But I'm the way I am. I'm who we who I am, and to be comfortable with what I have, and to be able to show people uh, this is what I know, and I would offer you my knowledge or my information. Uh, it feels really good. Si cambiamos la mirada, haremos que el mundo cambie. Nada que perder.